Warning, I am not qualified to give any advice or information about flying a real plane, and if you are a real pilot, do not follow my guides for real flying. This guide is only to help players in the video game Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Hello, this is Noxf, and today we'll be showing you around the cockpit of the Cessna 152, the ultimate tutorial plane in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I'll be giving an explanation on most of the buttons and levers in this cockpit, so you can take your flying to the next level. We'll be learning things such as left, right, and both magnetos, fuel mixture, throttle, RPM, heading indicator, flaps, trim, carburetor heat, primer, and starting and stopping your engine. When you get into the aircraft, I'll show you what all of these things are and how to use them. Although there will be a few things we'll be skipping over, such as Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range, or VOR. I won't be talking about radio or volume of the radio. So, here we are inside of the cockpit of the Cessna 152, and where we will be looking first. So, we'll be looking first at this display, the most important of all of your displays. This first one is the airspeed indicator, right over here. So, this one is quite simple while also being quite complex. To say simply, this shows how fast you are going through the air. Keep in mind if you are stationary, but in 50 knot wind, the airspeed indicator will read 50 knots. This only shows airspeed, not ground speed. So, the airspeed indicator is divided into four parts. The first is where there's no color, and if you're flying at this speed, that means you're going to stall and you won't be creating enough lift to keep your plane airborne. Then next up is the green, and the green is normal flying speed. Next is the yellow, which is called maneuver speed. That's when you're going a bit fast, but you can still control the plane, although it's not acting as fast as you probably would like it to be. So, and then the final one is red and beyond. You should never, ever go faster than this, or else your plane can destroy itself flying through the air. So, you notice that there's a thick line on the inside of this airspeed indicator. So that means if your speed is inside that, you can deploy full flaps safely. I'll be explaining what flaps do in the future, but right now you just have to know that you can't activate full flaps if you're in maneuver speed, faster, or more than about 90 knots. The next one is a simple one. It's the attitude indicator, and it shows where you're aiming the nose of an aircraft in relation to the horizon, and will sometimes need to be readjusted as it can break. So it's right here, and it's the brown and the blue one, and you do notice that right now it is a bit broken, as I am completely flat on the ground, and yet it says that I'm tilting at a 15 degree angle and pointing 20 degrees up above the horizon. So, keeping in stride, we have the turn indicator, which tells you what angle you are longitudinally and can help you when rolling and turning. So this is this one. So if you notice right now, I'm flat on the ground. Because I'm flat on the ground, it shows com I'm completely level. So, the next one we have is the compass-like flight instrument, called the heading indicator. This shows where you are headed, using north, west, south, and east. This needs to be adjusted every now and again, as it can also be messed up. So it says right now that we are heading west, and there's south, north, and east. So, this instrument right in the middle is the clock, and it just tells the time. Honestly, you should probably know what a clock is, but I'm just going into detail, because I think I might need to. So, so here are four more instruments, and they're quite useful and shouldn't be ignored. These include the altitude indicator. So, you read the smaller hand first and then the longer hand to read your altitude. So, you can change the altimeter calibration knob so that you set it for the absolute ground so that you want to set it so when you're taking off, it reads zero. So, so that way, when it says zero, that means you'll actually be on the ground. Because right now it's set to about sea level, so I'm about that much above sea level. So this is pretty close, and it doesn't need to be perfect. So 
Right below it is a vertical speed indicator, and this shows how fast you are going up and down. So, if you are rising, say, right after takeoff, the arrow will be pointing up, and if you are descending for landing, it will be pointing down. So, this is red in hundreds of feet per minute. If you're wondering what these two things are, these are the Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range, or VOR, which is what I was talking about earlier. I will not be talking about these, although you can do your research and find out what they do on your own. The most leftmost instrument is a tachometer, a very simple machine telling you the hundreds of RPM you're going at. This can tell your engine power, so right now my engine is off, so it shows zero. But say in level flight, I might be at 21 or 18, and the arrow will be pointing right about here. So, right beside it is another instrument that's very similar to the VOR, which I will also not be going into detail to, and you can research this on your own. Next up is the ampermeters, so this shows the status of your batteries. Right now I have both turned off, and it shows right zero, exactly where it's supposed to be. This is very important for starting up, to make sure that you have everything on, and you have sufficient power. So, let's go all the way back to the beginning, and when you first get into the plane. You're going to want to turn the plane on. So, of course you could just press Control e as it's saying here, but that's kind of boring. So, the first thing you want to do is, you want to take, you want to make sure that the parking brake is set. Because if the parking brake is not set and you turn on your engine, you could accidentally start moving and easily crash your plane. So you have to make sure that you're taking all the safety precautions. So, I'll explain what the parking brake does. The parking brake makes sure that your plane doesn't move by putting friction on the wheels. It's the exact same as in a car. So, the next thing you want to touch starting up the plane is the primer. So this helps start up your engine after a long time or very cold. You only want to pull this two to three times. I'm going to pull it two to be safe. But if you pull it any more than that, you can flood your engine. And that's something that you really, really don't want to do, as that can damage your engine and it won't be able to start up. So, next up, you want to turn on both of your batteries. So as you do that, my fuel quantity, and that goes on, my VOR changes, and if we go all the way back to my amp meters, you can see that they're now changed. So that shows that the batteries are all in working condition, and I can rely on them safely. So, there's also the lights, so we can turn on all the lights we want. I'm going to turn off the dome light for now, because it's quite distracting. So, right now we have this switch. So this is for turning on the actual engine and it's called the magnetos. So, these run on electricity and cause the combustion in your engine to happen. So, this is what actually powers the plane and cause your combustion engine to run on the plane. But, we can't just start them up. You notice that they're actually right and left? There are two of these, so that if one breaks, you can still keep on flying. One for redundancy. But, before we do that, we have to go over here. As you can see, there's mixture, and right now it's cut. So if I go a little bit up and look down, then it'll be easier to show. So what you want to do is you want to pull this, and you want to push it all the way in so that it reads 100%. So what the mixture does is it controls the difference between your air and your fuel in the combustion engine. So that means that if you... If you push it in, there'll be more fuel in your engine than air. If you pull it out, there'll be more air in your engine than fuel. When there's more fuel, it's called rich, a rich mixture, and when there's more air, it's called a lean mixture. A general rule is that the higher your altitude, the more air you want to have in your mix, so it evens out for the loss of air pressure. So, this is at 100% for takeoff, so that it can start the engine the best. Although, as soon as you take off, you really want to lower this, as having 100% mixture is very inefficient, and it can also damage your engine and pollute. So, now that we have full mixture, so we're having fuel in the engine, then we can now go over to the magnetos. So, set magneto to right, set it to left, but we actually want it to be both. So, right now it's set to both. That way, if one breaks, we don't have to change it in our flight. So, now we can click start. And our engine 
is now started. As you can see, our rotor is now flying. So we can also turn it right back off by setting magneto to off and cutting mixture. You usually want to cut mixture first before doing that, because if you turn off magnetos before cutting fuel, then fuel can pile up in your engine and cause corrosion, which is really not good. So as you can see, it stopped, and I'll do that one more time. So you do 100% mixture, then you go right, left, both, start. As the engine fires up, and now we can turn throttle on to now start accelerating. Sometimes it doesn't start up the first time, and you just have to do it again. Make sure everything's go, and if it doesn't work again, then pull the primer maybe one more time. So that's what I'll do. So you pull the primer, and then start. Oop, didn't click it. There we go. Okay, so now everything is in order. As you can see, these magnetos are very similar to the ignition for a car, or something along those lines. So... I wonder if you've noticed these things. It's the fuel quantity, oil temperature, and oil pressure. So the fuel quantity says how much fuel you have in your engine. So you always want to check this before taking off. So before taking off, I notice that I'm not empty, but I'm also not full. But I don't want to have it too much full, or else it'll weigh down my plane. So right now, right in the middle, it's pretty good. And I have the oil temperature and oil pressure. This should always stay right where it is, because if it changes, that means a catastrophic failure happened in your engine, and you need to do an emergency landing. So, you have successfully started up the plane. You have the engine on, you have the mixture set, all there is now is to take off the parking brake, pull full throttle, and you can then start to take off. But, before we take off, we still have to learn a few more things. So, as you notice here, I'm going to talk about the cabin air and the cabin HT. This doesn't really do anything, but if you're in a real plane, I'd assume this would probably change the temperature inside the cabin. But this is a simulator, so we don't need to worry about that at all. So, here is a few more of the most important things. One of them being trim, flaps, throttle, and carburetor heat, are the things that I haven't talked about yet. So I'm going to start off with the throttle which is very simple, and it says how much power you want to have the engine to produce. So right now it's zero, so the engine is producing almost no power. But if I pull, push this in, then it would start taking power, and would start going forwards. Although I don't want to do that, as I do not want to take off just yet. So, right next to that is the carburetor heat. So, the carburetor heat is a bit more complex than anything you'll probably be doing in the simulator, but I still wanted to go over it as it's very fascinating. So, when flying, there's a chance that your, I that your carburetor can get iced up, even on warm days. So, you want to change carburetor heat to cold or hot. When it's cold, that's normal, and that should be on most of the time that you're flying, as the... As when it goes through the cold, it gets filtered, and filtered air is exactly what you want in your carburetor. So if you switch it to hot, that means you put in heated air, and that can melt the ice. But you only want to do that when needed, because that air is not filtered, and that can damage your engine. So carburetor heat, you really ought to pay attention to, and you really want to only use when necessary. So, flaps. So, flaps come in a bunch of different settings, and they are measured in percentage. So, they're also measured in degrees. So, 100% flaps is 30 degrees of flaps, which is kind of confusing, but the 30 degrees means how much your elevons are tilted. So, if I go to third person, you notice that right here, it's a bit bright. But right here... These things are the flaps. So I set them to 30 degrees, and you can see that they are 30 degrees down. So if I go back into the plane, and say so set that to zero flaps, then you can see they close right back up. So now you know what they do, but what do they actually do? <laughs> so 
what the flaps do is they create more drag, which usually isn't good because it slows your plane down and can cause a stall. But they also create more lift, so you want to use them for taking off and for landing. As they can slow you down for landing, they can also create more lift and help you from stalling when you're going at low speeds. So, the elevator trim. The elevator trim is kind of like a poor man's autopilot. Because what it can do is, when you're flying, you sometimes have to pull on the yoke, and you have to mess around with stuff. And that's usually because of the plane that's tilting up and down. So you can stop that by using pitch trim. So what that does is it trims for level flight. You can look up online some more complicated tutorials, as this is a very complicated thing. What it does is it keeps your flight level if you mess around with it and set it properly. So that is most of the knobs, instruments, levers, and keys explained in this plane, the Cessna 152. So, this has been Noxeth, and see you soon.